I just want to do a quick video about mycoplasma fermentans incognitus. I think one of the things that, um, which I call MFI, I think one of the problems that people really struggle with when they begin to learn about this work is how can one pathogen cause so many problems, number one, and number two, how come I've never heard of it? How come I've never heard of this pathogen that's everywhere that's supposedly infecting everybody? And there's a couple of answers to that question. The reason that MFI is so destructive to the body and why it can cause so many significant symptoms that are broad in relation to um, the types of symptoms. For example, my son had Asperger's, okay? So that's a symptom that he experienced. When I had MFI, I had the chronic fatigue, the chronic exhaustion, the chronic pain, digestive shutdown, lymphatic shutdown, neuropathy, um, brain fog, confusion. I list that all on my website at quantumcommand.net if you want to take a look at that. My daughter had chronic stomach issues. My son, my other son had phenomenal adrenal fatigue. So each person is going to express the MFI dysfunction differently. And the main reason is because of the way MFI does a couple of things. The first thing that MFI does is it uses fake peptides to suppress genetic expression. That's the first thing. When MFI comes into the body, it lays over chromosomes um, fake peptides. Those fake peptides are like little switches, like little on and off switches, and they turn off genetic expression. And a lot of genetic expression that's being turned off is immune function. It's the ability to see MFI, to see what the body's doing, to be able to control the endocrine system, that kind of stuff. So that's one piece, is that it suppresses genetic expression through the use of fake peptides. The next thing it does is it shuts down the endocrine system in its entirety. And it does this by damaging particular glands. The first gland it damages is the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is like the brain of the body. It's the hormone brain of the body. Um, hypothalam the hypothalamus secretes somatostatin, for example. And somatostatin is a hormone that sort of regulates all the other hormones. Just kind of like if you went into your hallway and you tr were trying to turn on your heat, keep your heat and cool running properly in the summer and the winter, but your thermostat's broken. So the, the heater in the hallway is never going to work right because the thermostat's broken. So it's going to kick on or kick off at the wrong times or it's not going to kick on or kick off at all. Um, that's what somatostatin does in the body. It helps regulate other hormones. Um, that's the first gland that MFI attacks because that's where MFI lands, is in the hypothalamus. The second is the adrenals, and it might take, you know, four or five months for it to get down into the adrenals and attack the adrenals. But it begins to damage the adrenals and will stop the adrenals from releasing any hormones. And most people, when they feel that, they feel extreme fatigue. All of a sudden, they have food allergies. All of a sudden, um, their immune system seems to not be working as hard as it used to. They're having this um, these strange symptoms of pain, roaming pain. And that's because the adrenals are very significant in navigating um, inflammation and energy and food digestion and that kind of thing. So... That's the second way that MFI um, can destroy the body is through, number one, the suppressing of the genetic information through the fake peptides. Number two, through the damage of the endocrine system on a continual level. So after the adrenals are done, after it's damaged it, it goes to the thymus and then the thyroid. So those two... Um, um, those two uh, glands are also added. Then it moves to the lymphatic system and damages it. Then it moves to the digestive system. So you have systemic failure over a period of anywhere between 5 to 10 years, maybe even 2 to 4 years, depending on how fast it acts. It's different for each person. Now, when the endocrine system begins to fail, the person is going to exhibit particular symptoms related to that. For example, I couldn't eat wheat, I couldn't eat dairy, I couldn't eat, and I just basically couldn't eat anything. There's nothing that I could eat. Everything was completely, I was allergic to it. And so are my kids. 
so we got to the point where we just went to the GAPS diet and that was it um, because our food could not be digested. So the symptom groups are independent. Um, are, are, I'm sorry, the symptom groups are particular to that person. That person is going to exhibit symptom groups that are in relation to their particular genetic information being suppressed. And we're talking about all types of extremes or to, or to, to small, to small symptoms, anything between allergies, for example, allergies and immune system dysfunction, um, gluten sensitivity, that is an adrenal failure. That's MFI causing the adrenals to fail over a period of time. Um, chronic sinus uh, chronic sinus issues. <clears throat> That's the body not being able to uh, kill pathogens um, because MFI won't let it do that. And that's the third way that MFI basically shuts the body down by stashing pathogens and toxins in the body, being in control of all those pathogens and toxins. So let's just say you get, you have MFI, don't know it, um, and you pick up a flu bug, or you pick up E. coli, or you pick up Epstein-Barr, or you pick up, um, maybe you got HPV, or any of those types of pathogens. Your body cannot fight them because MFI, number one, won't let them. Number two, your immune system is so dysfunctional that you can't because MFI has totally cauterized any ability for you to, you know, to kill anything. And number three, because MFI will take that pathogen and it will stash it in a system, either the lymphatic system, the digestive system. Usually it's in the system in which it originated, like the respiratory system for a respiratory bug, um, E. coli for the digestive system, that kind of thing. And it stashes it and it holds it there for later so that when you're feeling well or you're feeling good, it can um, release that pathogen on its own timeline. So you're, you're constantly, and that's why, by the way, people can't get rid of Lyme disease on their own because MFI holds on to those Lyme pathogens, the Babesia, the Bartonella, the Ehrlichia, the Borrelia, all those pathogens. That's the connection. The connection to Lyme disease and MFI is that MFI is what is causing the long-term infection because the immune system is shut down immediately after MFI enters the body and MFI enters into the body with the tick. The, the mycoplasma is in the tick. It's not just Borrelia that you have to worry about. It's the mycoplasma. It's what's causing you to not be able to get over Lyme disease because it's the causative chronic illness creator. It's what is causing that. So with Lyme disease, I've had several clients who have gotten bit by ticks since I've worked with them and they never came down with Lyme disease. They never had a problem. They never had an immune response. And months later, they're fine because they were inoculated against MFI. I do inoculation scans so that you're not, um, so you're inoculated from it permanently for the rest of your life. And you never have to worry about getting MFI again. So <clears throat> let's go over the, the ways that MFI destroys the body. Genetic suppression. Endocrine failure. Multi-systemic failure with the endocrine system, lymphatic system, and digestive system no longer working. The fourth way, which is a secondary way that MFI takes over the body, is really less about MFI and more about the vectors that carry MFI. There are warm weather vectors that carry MFI. It's not a matter of if you get MFI, it's when you get it. The first vector is a tick, and with the tick comes MFI and all the Lyme pathogens. And sometimes you can get Epstein-Barr with a um, tick bite. And I've worked with people that have Epstein-Barr, um, which looks like, um, and mono too. They kind of all look the same, so it's hard to tell without a blood test, which you really have like on the front end. But when I test you, I can test to see which of those pathogens, you know, you were dealing with. So it's no, no big deal on my end, but the blood tests are always really kind of weird and you can never always know from a blood test. So anyway, so the warm weather vectors that carry MFI are the ticks. Um, of course, we know they're just ubiquitous. The second um, warm weather vector is a mosquito. Now, I just worked on a couple of people this week, and I've asked the body how many times MFI has come into the body for them in like the last month, and it's like eight or nine times. I mean, MFI comes into the body through mosquitoes quietly, very, very easily. We walk outside and we get bit by a mosquito. The mosquitoes have MFI in them. So that's why it's also ubiquitous across the, the nation, essentially, is because 
all the mosquitoes have MFI in them. So that's the second vector. The third vector is vaccines. The vaccine lines are contaminated with MFI, and I would direct you to an NIH study that talks about the ubiquitous nature of mycoplasmas in the different equipments, but also the cell lines too. If I find that article, I'll post it in the comments in the, in the link section. Um, <clears throat> but mycoplasmas are ubiquitous, and MFI is no different than any other mycoplasma. It is very hard to get rid of. Um, and so once a cell line is contaminated with MFI, either deliberately or accidentally, it's in there. Whether it's the flu vaccine or rubella or MMR or anything like that. And if you think that um, the vaccines are the only causative factor of these vaccine in injuries, you're half right. The other half is that MFI has um, been contaminating these vaccines and causes the acute onset of these symptoms because the endocrine system shuts down upon MFI coming into the body. Do you understand what that means? It means like turning all the lights off in your body instantly and all of a sudden you're wondering why you're whacking your head against the wall and banging your leg against the table and tripping over stuff and you can't do anything in the dark and that's what happens to the body when MFI comes into it. Is it can't do anything without the endocrine system. And so things start to shut down. You get acute onset symptoms like autism, like Asperger's, like allergies, like um, numbness, like paralysis, like the inability to speak, the inability to eat. All those things are an acute onset um, of MFI through a vaccine that's been contaminated with it. So the, the fourth way that MFI sort of basically destroys our life is through the different vectors. So the, again, the main vectors of MFI are the mosquito, the tick bite, the, um, the vaccine lines. You can also get it through some farmed um, shrimp and tuna. I've actually gotten it that way. Um, it's very, very rare, so I don't, even, I don't even mess with farmed tuna or shrimp anymore. I just always buy fresh when I buy it at all. Um, so those are the major vectors, and that's why it's very easy to get MFI. It's almost like it's ridiculously easy to get MFI. Mycoplasma fermentans incognitus is a weaponized pathogen. It has been mixed with brucella and, again, is ubiquitous in our environment. And that's what you really need to know. That's why the cataclysm of, my, of MFI is so great. And that's why we're all so sick. is because we cannot get rid of this ubiquitous pathogen in our environment. Okay, that's what this that's where this is coming from is the different warm weather vectors. Okay, my scans remove MFI. They create uh, an inoculate. I created an inoculation scan so that you're immune to MFI forever. And there, by the way, there are groups of people out there that are immune to MFI. They are naturally immune. They have the genetic information on chromosome 16 um, that allows them to be immune. So those are the people that you see that never get sick. They never seem to go to the doctor. They don't use their health insurance. They only get into accidents and hardly ever then probably in order to use their doctor. They don't get sick. They seem to have unlimited energy. They're super active. They're the kind of people that hike like crazy and have tons of energy and maybe they're a really great salesman and they just are totally into their life because they're not sick because they've been bitten half a million times and never have gotten MFI. So there is a group of people, you know, that are naturally immune. None of my family was, we, none of us. I have found, come across some people that are naturally immune and guess what? They're usually not my clients. They're people that are friends of clients or um, husbands of clients or, or children of clients that never get sick. And so the clients never feel the need to for them to get scanned or to work with me because they never get sick, so they don't have a problem. So my goal in these scans is to for you to never get sick. I mean, to rarely get sick and to definitely not relapse from MFI. So this relapse scan has been a really big deal. Um, keeps you from getting MFI again, even though you get bit by a mosquito, even though you get by, bit by a tick. I've had two people in the last month get bit by ticks, get Lyme disease, get MFI, and they killed it off on their own you know, I used the muscle testing to verify all this. They killed it on their own, and um, there were no immune symptoms. It was basically like a little blip on their radar. They're like, oh, a tick. They took it off. Um, three weeks later, they're still totally normal. They're fine. So your body can kill off the Lyme pathogens if it can kill off the MFI, because it's the MFI that is causing the disease, the chronic illness. 
Look online, look for Mycoplasma fermentans incognitus, you're not going to find a lot. You might find the patent um, by the United States Army. Um, the U.S. Army owns this pathogen, um, and so there's a great book out there called Project Daylily. Um, there's some information on YouTube. If you look up the phrase uh, weaponized my mycoplasma, you'll find some good information about that. I will try and post some links in the comment, in the, in the link section, so it'll give you a little bit more information. But today, what I wanted to focus on is why people have so much problem, so many problems, dealing with the fact that one pathogen can be causing all of these problems, anywhere from chronic fatigue to fibromyalgia to autism to Asperger's to allergies to, um, I think it's, I can't prove it, but I think ALS <clears throat> is connected to it because of the hormone deprivation. Um, I've worked on people with cancer, with cancer um, numbers going to zero. Um, so that's the type of things that are created by MFI. And we can go, I'll go more into detail about each system. At some point, I'll be posting those videos. Um, I just want to kind of give you an overall sense of how MFI works, which is the peptide, the fake peptide uh, generation on the genetic information that suppresses the information, the total shutdown of the endocrine system, and the various other systems, lymphatic and digestive. And, of course, the ubiquitous nature of the vectors for this pathogen. So I hope that helps. I hope it gives you just kind of a little summary. Um, and each system we'll go through and we'll talk about how each system is specifically affected by MFI. So I hope that helps. Check out my website. It's quantumcommand.net. Also, look at the Quantum University link, um, the Quantum University tab. That's where I am launching Quantum University to teach this technique. This is a quantum technique. This is not your mother's energy work, okay? This is quantum work within the body in real time. You are quantumly releasing pathogens in real time, measuring things using muscle testing, high-tuned um, reflex action muscle testing. So, um Check that out. I hope that that helps. Leave some comments below if you have some questions. I'll try and get to them, but you, can, you guys can probably understand how my inbox is pretty inundated. So I hope to hear from you. If you're interested in a session, click on the wellness sessions um, or a sessions tab or send me an email via my website. So hope you guys are doing well. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot.